Hello everyone. I am presenting Me vs. Superwoman, Effects of Customization and Identification in a VR Exa game. And this is a paper co-authored with a few others. So we've got Jordan Kuluris, Zoe Jeffrey, James Best, and Eamon O'Neill. And we are all from the Reveal Research Center. Who has struggled staying fit and healthy? If you have, then you're not alone. Even at the best of times that is not being locked down, being fit and healthy is really challenging. And most people who start to exercise drop out within the first few months. Fortunately, there are ways to motivate people to exercise more. And one of those ways is extra games. So just imagine you are sitting on your exercise and you're not just looking at, at the numbers on your screen, but you're actually looking at a game. You're, for example, playing a racing game, which gamifies your exercise. And there's plenty of research showing that this can increase intrinsic motivation and participation of groups that would otherwise not exercise. So that's great. And some work even looks at the use of VR for exa games. So with VR exa games, you know, not just looking at a screen, but you can truly immerse yourself into the exercise and the exercise and the game become an embodied experience where you're actively a participant in the whole experience. And this leads us to virtual identity. So when immersed in such an exa game, people can develop, are more likely to develop virtual identities, the identities in which they perceive themselves in the game. And at the core of this is the player avatar. So players often can customize their own avatars like this one here. And often these avatars are similar to the players. And sometimes they are idealized. They look as they, the players would like to look. And so this has been studied and the effects of using avatars and avatar customization has been studied for non-exertion games. And people have shown that this can increase intrinsic motivation, flow, presence and self-esteem. What's well, not to like? That's great, right? And people also have looked at some non-VR EXA games and found similar benefits. So in, in a nutshell, it increases your experience, it enriches your experience, it makes you feel better, it motivates you. And the natural question, if I'm saying non-VR EXA games is, well, how about VR? What about avatar customization in VR? And this leads me to our research questions. So what we are looking at is avatar and high intensity VR exa games. So just imagine you're immersed in an exa game in VR and we're talking high intensity exa gaming. So think about the last couple of minutes in the Tour de France, that kind of high intensity. So you're in the middle of it and we are asking, well, how does avatar customization affect the player experience? Can player avatar identification improve physical performance? Can it actually make you more powerful and faster? Something that we don't know yet. And how do different styles of customization affect the player? Do they have different effects? For example, more realistic avatars versus more idealized avatars. And we conducted three studies to investigate this. Let's start with study one, which compared the effect of generic avatars, which basically look like Lego figures like this one here, with the effect of more realistic looking avatars like this one here. And looking at these pictures here, you immediately see one of the challenges of these kinds of studies, because when using VR, usually you're inside of your avatar, so you don't really see your avatar very well. Yes, and for that reason, we were using a self-competitive VR Exa game. And in this self-competitive cycling-based VR Exa game, people embody their own avatar, so they can look down onto their own avatar, they can see their avatar in these wing mirrors that are attached to their bike, but they also race against a ghost, against their own ghost. That is, they see their own avatar racing against them representing one of their previous races. So they can properly see themselves at least from the back or you know from the front in the wing mirror. And so this is how the game was played. 
there you see me sitting on the exercise cycle that we use. And here you see the exercise protocol that we use. So we're talking about high intensity training. So we were using high intensity interval training, five minutes in total with two 30 second sprint. And if you've ever done HIIT training, you have probably experienced that even two 30 second, second sprints, if you do them really hard, can make you really, really exhausted. So that's um, a nice, intense way of exercising, really pushing the players. And what, what we did is let each player play the game thrice, three rounds, once as a baseline without competitor to record their performance. And then with um, by competing against a generic avatar and competing against a realistic avatar based on their recorded performance as a ghost. And we made it a bit harder when competing against the avatars by increasing their resistance to really push our participants to their limits. So this is how the extra game looks like. Let's have a look at our first results. More power. People exerted more power when competing against their realistic avatars, that's the R column, compared to their generic avatars, G. So that's great. Just by changing the avatar, by customizing your own avatar, you get immediately faster, more powerful. And more intrinsic motivation. So in this graph on the right, you see the baseline and then you see the motivation, intrinsic motivation, enjoyment, interest drops when competing against the generic avatar, you know, it also it gets harder because, you know, in resistance increases and then you have to compete against this generic avatar, you know, it's not uncommon, it's not significant, the difference, but then it significantly comes up again when competing against the realistic avatar. So that's great. Those are promising results. It's really worth already customizing your own avatars. Makes you faster, makes you feel better. What's not to like? Great, and this leads us to our second study where we compared realistic and idealized avatars. So this is me, and this is my realistic avatar. And about 10 years of hard gym workouts and one customization session later, we get an idealized avatar like this. And what we asked participants to do is create an idealized avatar that reflects the dreams and wishes of how you would like to look, even if it's just for a day. So really, you know, let their dreams and wishes go wild, whatever you like. And again, we let people compete, um, play the game three times, once as a baseline and then with a realistic avatar and with their idealized avatar. And the way we customize these idealized avatars is again, letting participants do the customizations themselves based on their realistic avatars using the same software. And it took participants about 15 to 20 minutes to do that. And on the right side, you see some examples of realistic and idealized avatars. And as you can see, most people followed stereotypes. Generally, women preferred a slimmer build and men preferred more muscles. And most people said that they liked the avatars, they enjoyed the experience. So that's a positive thing. First of all, we looked at wishful identification. So wishful identification is a measure of how much you would like to be your avatar, how much you identify with your avatar in a wishful manner. And as you can say, see here, wishful identification increased significantly from a realistic avatar to the idealized avatar. So in other words, the idealized avatar is doing its job. That's a good thing. So now the interesting question, how about power? Does it make me faster racing against my own Superman? Well, let's have a look. Less power. <laughs> so as you can see here, when racing against the idealized avatar, people uh, exerted significantly less power. So they were slower than when racing against their realistic avatar. That's an interesting result, isn't it? All right. So. Avatar customization with realistic avatar seems to be really good, yes, but going to idealized avatar actually makes them work less hard. Well, this leads us to study three, realistically enhanced avatars. So if 
Realistic avatars are good and idealized avatars are somewhat enjoyable, but they decrease your power. Is there maybe something in between we could look at? You know, between a real and ideal, can we make realistic avatars more idealized in a realistic manner? So just imagine you start with your realistic avatar and you think, how would you look like as your realistic avatar if you um, train hard and stick to a strict diet for one month? And that's what we did. This is how your avatar will look like, slightly slimmer, slightly more muscular. How would your avatar look like after six months? A bit more muscles here and there, I guess. And this is basically a trajectory towards the idealized avatar. So that's what we did. And we let players play the game for four rounds. The baseline round is usual, the realistic avatar round. And we had two enhanced avatars, one month enhanced E1 and six months month enhanced E6. So now what were the results? What do you think? Let's have a look. Let's have a look at wishful identification first. And indeed, there's a significant trend here. So there's more wishful identification for your E1 avatar and even more wishful identification for your E6 avatar after six months of rigorous training and diet. And how about power? Well, interestingly, we did not found, find any significant power differences between the different avatars. So it's uh, fairly similar. And that's also, in a sense, quite encouraging because it shows us that we can basically um, introduce a progression in our avatars, a little bit of idealization of our avatar without harming the performance of participants while still getting the benefits of some wishful identification. So now why? That's the big question. Let's have a look at some possible explanations. First of all, the generic avatar versus the realistic avatar. One possible explanation is feed forward, which is a psychological training technique which can help you to achieve performance and motivation gains through identification with an improved self model. In other words, if you see yourself performing better than you actually normally perform, that makes you perform better. And in a sense, that's what we did. So the ghost avatar that people were competing against, when that was a realistic avatar, they could identify, they could see themselves and they could try to catch up with that avatar, even though it was harder because of increased resistance. So there was likely a feed forward effect. Now, with regards to idealized avatar, why did people exert less power? Why did it make them slower? Well, one explanation is self discrepancy. Basically, if you're comparing yourself against something that you're not, that can make you feel uncomfortable, uneasy, dissatisfied with your actual self. It's called self discrepancy and that can hold you back. That can be demotivating. And so based on self-determination theory, which is a popular motivation theory from psychology, we formed two concepts which also explain what we observed quite well, we believe, of intrinsic and extrinsic identification. Intrinsic identification is identification that gives you a sense of oneness with yourself. So you feel, oh, this is me, and it makes you feel good about yourself versus extrinsic identification, which is more related to extrinsic motivation, is more related to personas that you project through our ego, which we are really not and which we are just comparing ourselves against. And because we really feel that we are really not that, it can make us feel uncomfortable. And when looking at the enhanced avatars, we believe that these enhanced avatars, because they're still realistic, inspirational, they strike a good balance between intrinsic and extrinsic identification. And that's why they can help you without having the drawbacks of the idealized avatars. In conclusion, realistic avatar customization can improve player experience and performance in extra games. So that's a good thing. If you're playing an extra game, customize your avatar. <laughs> Idealized avatars can increase wishful identification, but may impact physical performance negatively. So careful when bulking your, uh, your avatar up too much. 
And enhancing realistic avatars may be a good balance. They may support progression, showing how you progress or how you made progress while avoiding the negative effects of idealized avatars.